Hello, everybody. Okay, let me just double check that we shall be live now. And it might be a surprise. And I don't know how many people will show up because I we, we didn't have announced anything. <laughs> so we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you will. I know. I, I, I invited uh, one of my friends that I write math, math papers so with. So maybe he's oh, here. Oh, nice. I invited Payam. So once he gets a notice, he should be here too. So let me see. Okay. Uh, it should be uh, on right now. And right now we have 11 people. Right. Right. Wait, how come you guys a little bit smaller? Let me actually. Wait. Okay, let me just fix this a little bit. It's supposed to be... Okay. I'm sorry about this technical difficulty. What happened no, to the... Fine. No, you're fine. Little, uh, cropping like this. I just put it in the middle. Alright! Oh, wow! Guess how many people we have? We have a total of 108 people watching right now. All right, so I will be using the phone to read the chart from you guys, and let's just probably get started. And I think we are ready to go. So, great, great. hello everybody, and today I'm really excited because I uh, invited Professor Pen to be on the channel, and we have well, uh, this is how we met. Um, I think it was b because I uploaded a video on the sum of n over two to the nth power, and. Um, you replied to me because you showed me two more ways to do it. And ever since then, I you know, got to know your channel. And I was really impressed by your work because you have so many materials on your channel. Great stuff. And for the people who don't know, Professor Chipan also has a math channel. He has a lot of interesting math questions and you know, differential equations, put them some questions and number theory questions. You guys can definitely go ahead and check that out. And the live stream for today is just that we are trying, we, we are just trying to get to know each other. And I will also uh, open questions to you guys. And we will just take time to ask questions for each other. And you guys will have chance to ask your questions as well. Yeah, so that's the thing. And but Professor Pen, do you have anything that you want to say to the viewers? Uh, no, uh, no, I mean, maybe just like, uh, thanks, for uh, thanks for coming to the chat, to the chat. and, uh, and uh, anyone who's, anyone watched, who's my watched my channel already, already. Thanks, thanks for watching my channel. My channel. Um, um, I've seen a bunch, I've of, seen a bunch of new subscri subscribers, in the, subscribers week, in the last so week, so that has been so great. Has been great. Um, and anyway, and anyway excited I'm go. excited to go. All right, yeah, let's go. All right, so the, we put down three components about this interview, and I categorize it as you know, some personal questions and some math questions and also some future questions. So let's start with some personal questions so we can get to know each other a little bit more. All right, so um, I wanted to just ask you, and I think you know this already, as a math person, everybody will ask you like, what's your experience that makes you love math? Um, I like how precise math is. You know, there's always, you know, there's like, always like a correct answer. answer. Um, and, and there's never any, uh, doubts, doubts whether or not a solution is correct. If you followed the correct logic, there's, um, it's kind of nothing, kind of nothing squishy, about squishy about it. Ah, yeah. Same here. Yeah. Just like straightforward and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. And, um, besides math, I also noticed that you do a lot of sports as well. And one of the sports that you do is rock climbing, which is really impressive. And can you share with us, uh, actually I wanted to know this myself, that if you have any favorite moment, I'm pretty sure you do have a lot, but can you just share one of your favorite moments when you uh, rock climbed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm, pretty I'm pretty into rock climbing. climbing. I've been climbing for like uh, 12 or 15 years or something now. Or something wow. now. Um, and, I've um, and I've climbed all over the country and a little bit internationally, internationally as wow. well. Um, <laughs> And, and there was a, there was a so, I so I do this type of rock climbing called sport climbing, and in fact, like I generally project rock climbs, which means I try them over and over and over, and over, and over until I until I'm, until I'm able to do them successfully without falling. Without falling. Mm -hmm. 
Um, and so I'm and going, so for, I'm going for difficulty instead of like adventure, adventure and stuff like that. And, like that. Mm-hmm. and so, and so uh, maybe the, maybe the first, first really, really, really difficult, really difficult route, route that I did, that I did in New Hampshire while I was in grad school, school. It's, it's called China Beach. Beach. Oh. Um, um, that was maybe, that was maybe my best, best experience. It was, uh, it was, uh, I, even uh, I even remember the date. It was March 20th, 2010. Wow, 10 years ago. Wow. Yeah, 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 and yeah, like, and that was like I don't know, I don't know, maybe, maybe my favorite rock climb that, rock I've, climb that I've ever done, and, uh, and um, definitely like, definitely like top ten top experience, ten experience of, my of my life. Wow, which one's more challenging? I spent like I spent like I spent like a year, and, like a year and, half, and a half like training, like, training, training to get in the right shape to do it and stuff like this. It was a great experience. I see. Which one do you think is more challenging, the rock climbing or math? Uh, uh, math is math for sure, is more, for sure challenging. more challenging. <laughs> <laughs> I think maybe I think I'm, maybe better, I'm rock better at rock climbing than, than I am at math. Oh, really? um, okay. But uh, uh, that's uh, kind of neither here nor there. I don't think I can ever do rock climbing though. That just sounds wow, so impressive for that. And I know you also have to do the uh, you also have done other stuff as well. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, it's fun. All right. So, um, can you share one of your favorite moments when you were in college or grad school? Um, yeah, um, sure. Yeah, sure. So, so probably, probably um, when I was in grad school, I had we had a really good group of students that came in as uh, first year. So I went to a, a fairly small graduate program at uh, SUNY, Albany, so SUNY Albany, so the State University of New York at Albany. And um, um, just like becoming friends, becoming friends with all of our incoming class, class uh, was, a, uh, was really a really good experience. And then, and then we studied, we studied together, for together for the courses that we were in, that we were in. Mm-hmm. and we studied, we studied for our prelims, prelims together. together. Um, and um, and we, really we really all helped, each, helped other each other out become better, better math, math students, students that led that to, led you know, to kind, of you know, kind of where we are now. now. That was probably like, that was probably the best experience, like the interaction with and that's, and that's kind of like, like the best experience, the best experience of, math of math in general, in general is interacting, interacting with people that are associated, associated with math, whether it's like, you know, research friends at research conferences, conferences or like talking to you on the Skype call right now. I think that's my favorite part. I see, I see, I see. All right, so do you, would you like to take the question, take some questions from the chat right now? So yeah, for the viewers, yeah, if great. you guys have any questions for Professor Pen, you guys can just leave it uh, in the chat right now. We'll be reading it, and then Professor Pen, you can pick some questions to answer, and we'll continue with the interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you guys, wait, they said echo, so I don't know what happened with the echo. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't, know. Know. I, I don't hear an echo. Oh, I see. I know what they are saying. Let me see. Ah, I, I know. So let me just put on a headphone. Good point. Let me see. Oh, I see. Uh, I, I finally figured out how to find the chat. I see one question. Why did I start making videos? So um, I really wanted to flip my classes last semester so students would watch videos outside of class and then spend all of class time doing group work. And so I started off doing classes last fall semester in number theory and differential equations. And that was my only purpose was to flip my classes. And so I only made videos just for those classes but then on a whim I just made kind of a fun video and I noticed more people watched it um, and I kept making fun videos so now I make maybe half videos for my classes and half fun videos um, 
and it's been like a really fun journey. Nice. Um, how's this now? So for the viewers, uh, do you guys still hear any echoes? I think right now, okay, perfect. Yeah, sorry, I think because early when you were talking, um, the sound came to here and then like somehow goes back to the, my laptop again. So that's why they were saying that there was, there was echoes. So yeah. Great. Perfect, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, um, all right, do you guys have any questions? And again, thank you for everybody for coming. And again, it's a, it's a surprise. And oh, hey, new Prime Math. Okay, so maybe let's see. Oh, some people are asking ah. this, what is my hardest math question? Okay. So, uh, well, maybe the hardest kind of elementary math problem that I've ever come up against, which I didn't solve. <laughs> um, I was writing a, a paper about, you know, my research field or whatever, vertex algebras. And we ha ended up needing for just one step of one lemma to find, uh, to show to, that a certain matrix was invertible. Wow. And, and it was a matrix made of binomial coefficients. And it, usually matrices of binomial coefficients uh, are easily known to be invertible. They're called uh, uh, Pascal matrices. And it's like well known that they're, they have a nice inverse and mm -hmm. stuff. But this one was made up of binomial coefficients where the top entry was an arbitrary complex number. Mm. And so we just couldn't do it. And then I had a student, this is when I was in Colorado college and I gave him the problem and he is much better at math than I will ever be. Wow. He's now a grad student at uh, university of Oregon, Gautam Webb. Um, and he was able to show that this matrix was invertible and I don't understand the proof that he wrote it all. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, he was a author on that paper that we wrote. So ah, I see. Yeah. Oh, later on, I'm yeah. also putting some of your uh, links to your paper to your channel on the YouTube description. So uh, for the viewers, if you guys would like to uh, see more, you guys can use the links. And how about oh, great. Uh, okay? New Prime Math asks, "Can you share the secret of how you make so many videos? It's amazing. I would like to ask the same too because yes." <laughs> Yeah, it's just impressive, seriously. Well, um, I don't know. I have, uh, my chalkboard is in my basement. Uh -huh. So I just have to go into the basement to record. Um, and so maybe that streamlines the whole process. I don't know. Uh -huh. And then, um, I mean, since we're like quarantined or whatever, I don't have to teach classes kind of normally. Uh -huh. So all that class time that I would be spending... Uh -huh is freed up. Mm -hmm. um, I, maybe those are the two main drivers. I think the fact that my chalkboard's in my basement really helps. Nice, I see. I also got my little two whiteboards. Well, yeah. my, my whiteboards are not big enough, so you know, something's better than nothing, so yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I just ordered a new chalkboard, so I'm really oh, excited. Oh, nice, 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 um, nice. To get that, it, sh it should be nice. Okay, uh, did, did you anything? Did you see anything that you would like to answer as well? Oh, okay. I, I saw something. Uh, yeah. Did you see any? Mm -hmm. Oh, a uh, question about my backflip. Yes, I saw that one too. Uh, I don't know. So, I don't. I don't know what to say about that. I um, competed in gymnastics from the age of six until I graduated high school, wow. and then I was a, a springboard diver in college. For what it's worth. <laughs> And so I've always been able to do a backflip. And so I just randomly did a backflip for my students in class <laughs> once when they were kind of in a bad mood uh, to get everyone in a better mood. And so I became known as like math professor that would do backflips around the college that I teach at. <laughs> um, and then my students asked me to do one in a video. So I did one in a video and I do that every once in a while now. Um, it's really just kind of a funny joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's impressive. I don't think I can ever do a bad flick. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I have an unfair advantage because I've been able to do that for many, 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 many years. <laughs> I see. Wow, wow. Hopefully we'll see... I, I saw your video today. You did another one. So that was like, oh, wow. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>
All right, so let me just go back to my questions, and then later on we will come back to you guys if you guys have any more questions. All right, so perfect. Um, all right, so let's get into the math part. Which do you prefer more, pure math or applied math? And which one would you suggest students to choose? Yeah, so uh, I definitely. This would have been a very very easy question to answer a few years ago I would have said pure math I mm. and I do uh, enjoy kind of the beauty of pure math like abstract algebra and um, topology and stuff like that um, but since I've been teaching at my current college I've taught differential equations mm -hmm. a few times mm -hmm. and I do some applications in there those haven't really shown up on the videos but I do this um, like lab where we model a zombie apocalypse, which is like a little too on the nose right now, but we've been doing that for a year, mm -hmm. for years. Um, and I've really enjoyed like that sort of applied math uh, flavor in teaching. Um, although kind of my heart will always be in pure math. As to what students should pursue, they should probably pursue applied math because it's easier to find a job. I agree, I agree, yes. Um, but that being said, you know, like, I guess the party line is to follow your heart and whatever um, feels best for you. Mm -hmm. But if you're on the fence and they both are nice, then you should do applied math. I see. I see. <laughs> All right. Um, I noticed that you have done a lot of math competition questions on your channel, such as the Pune exam questions and also a lot of the math Olympiad questions. What are the math competition experience that you have as a student? And another thing is that how do you approach hard questions in general? Oh, so um, I, as a student, I took the Putnam exam twice and didn't do very good. Um, and uh, that was kind of it. And then when I started my job at Colorado College, so that was like uh, 2013, so I was not, I hadn't been out of grad school for very long. Mm -hmm. um, I, there was a need for someone to coach their Putnam team and also to write uh, their problem solving exam, which is called the Rawls Math Competition. Mm. And so I thought that was something good to mm -hmm. do. And that's when I got more interested in competition math problem solving. Um, and uh, as far as how to tackle a hard problem uh, is mostly just kind of don't give up, look for similar problems that are a bit easier, mm -hmm. try if you can try to see if you can solve those as like a warm up and then maybe adapt a solution into the solution of the problem you're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, math. Math is really, really hard. Yes. I mean, let's not, like, beat around the bush. I, I think math is maybe the only subject where the professional mathematicians think that it's the hardest subject. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And so um, if something feels frustrating, that's okay. And, uh, like, professional mathematicians are frustrated all Definitely. the time in life. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, you just have to keep plugging away. Okay. That's yes. really all you have to do. Don't give up. Yes. Yeah. Do you have a favorite math competition question that you have ever done, ever solved? Um, yeah, I don't remember the name. I don't remember the exact. Uh, well, I have this one right now that I'm, I just shot a video for it, but it wasn't very good. So I'm going to have to shoot it okay. again. Mm -hmm. I think it was from a competition. I because I found some something about mm -hmm. it, and someone said it for, was from a 1982 Soviet math competition. But but then I couldn't find it if I looked that up online. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, like this really beautiful problem about like adding up floors of things on one side and adding up floors of logarithms on the other side and some sort of equality. Uh -huh. um, and there's this really nice picture proof. Um, and maybe that's just like kind of closest on my mind right now. So I'm thinking about it the most. But uh, that's not that's definitely a very new problem to me because I only heard about it a few days ago. Uh, uh, there's an old yeah. Putnam problem that I liked a lot, but I don't remember the exact statement or the exact uh, year or number. I just remember that it involved generating functions. Mm -hmm. And I really involve like... 
I really enjoy like just technical, straightforward, um, like problem solving strategies, like pushing around uh, symbols and re-indexing sums and combinatorial. I really enjoyed that type of um, problem a lot, even though it's not really that beautiful. Um, it's something that I like to do. I see, and mm -hmm. I'm kind of good at. Yeah. So again, for the viewers, if you just came in and today we have a professor uh, pen on our channel right now, and then I will just share experience. And he has done a lot of Puna XM questions on his channel. So go ahead and check it out. The link will be in the description later on. And all right. So another question I have for you is that uh, when you study math, right? How do you know that you know enough for a topic already? Or how do you know that you are ready for exam already? Oh, so like if, so let me, let me see if I understand your question. So like I, you're saying like, if I were to put myself in the position of a student yeah. and I am preparing for an exam, which I never have to do again, by the way, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do I know that I'm yeah. ready? Um, well, I guess like the, my most kind of recent memory of doing something like this is like passing qualifying exams when I was in grad mm -hmm. school or whatever. And that's kind of a high stakes mm -hmm. thing. And what we did was we prepared by doing as many problems as we could, uh, from past exams and then looking at all the important results that led to being to led that led to solutions to those past exams. And then we tried to, come up with our own questions that were similar to those mm -hmm. building off of like the classic results from the subject and the um, past exam problems and other ex problems from like textbooks that were appropriate or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I think just doing a lot of problems is most important. Definitely, I uh, have seen people in grad school or in, like other since grad school that they do a lot of reading of mathematics but not enough doing of mathematics um and i've always been a big fan of like kind of trying a problem and getting in a bit over your head and then digging yourself out by learning knowledge as you work on the problem mm -hmm. instead of like reading ahead of time and becoming like totally prepared to solve this problem that you haven't even tried yet I see. Yeah. I mean, that doesn't help really for an exam, but maybe that helps while you prepare for the exam. Mm. Just try the problem. Yeah, because, you know, sometimes I feel yeah. like, man, I'm totally not ready for the exam. And then, like, sometimes I feel, I feel pretty good about the exam. Well, okay. And especially as a teacher, like, sometimes I feel like, do I really know enough to teach the course? Et cetera, et cetera, you know. So... That. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I uh, used to feel that way as well, but now I've taught so many different classes and um, some classes that I never took. <laughs> and I realized that uh, you just have to stay a day or two ahead and it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and then just like your, your experience of having done so much – like so much math in the past will like make it okay. Like I never took a number theory oh. class. Um, the, I've taught it twice right, now. Yeah. And uh, the first time I just stayed like two or three or four days ahead of the class. And then the second time reviewing what I had learned the first time I had taught it. And now I have a really good command of number theory, mm. but I didn't, I didn't learn the entire class. I mean, maybe this is terrible, but I think probably more people do this than let on. I didn't learn the whole semester of number theory before teaching it for the first time. I learned like the first half of the semester of number theory and then filled in the details. Ah, uh, I see. I see, I see. But I mean, you know, I also had taken like graduate abstract algebra and stuff like that. So I had known a lot of it kind of through ob osmosis beforehand. Mm. Yes. Right. Yeah. 
Like I haven't taught linear algebra, I haven't uh, studied linear algebra for so long. So if I ever have to teach it again, like yeah. if I ever have to teach it uh, at my college, I will probably end up doing the same thing because it's not likely for me to like learn all the linear algebra first before the semester and then teach it. So yeah. Right, and and you'll be fine. And um, you know, like uh, you've taught, you've like been working and doing math for so many years that it's gonna come very yes. very quickly, right? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So okay, right now let's go ahead and open to you guys. If you guys have any questions for Professor Pan, we are looking at the chart right now, so uh, you guys can ask uh, questions. And Professor Pan, would you like to just take a look at the chart to see um, what? Questions that people have, and then again, thank yeah, you everybody sure. for coming, especially for the people who say hi. Hi. Someone says linear algebra is easy to forget. Yeah, but it's like the most important subject. It shows everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, the modern way of teaching differential equations has got a lot of linear algebra in it, mm -hmm. and um, lots of applied math, like lots of. Uh, a discrete applied math has to do with linear algebra. You know, the Google search algorithm has linear algebra. It's maybe the most important uh, subject to have a good handle mm. on. I see. Let's see. All right, so. Um, let's see. Yeah, so someone asks, uh, what does a vertex operator algebra consist of? Well, it's pretty hard to describe. So, so there's this thing called, uh, so an, an algebra, like a, an associative or a non-associative algebra, it's made up of a vector space that has a product. So like uh, square matrices, like two by two matrices, they form an algebra because it's like a four dimensional vector space. You've got choices for all the four entries, but then you can multiply the objects and get a new two by two matrix. Well, a vertex algebra is like that, except there are like infinitely many different ways to make products of the elements mm. and it's non-associative. It has like, it's like really not super pretty. It's super tech. Technical, but it has a lot of applications to other areas of math and physics and stuff. I see. So it's it's like more useful than it is pretty. Uh, what's my favorite linear algebra book? Uh, well, I don't know if this is my favorite or if it's the most beautiful one, but it's free. I really like the Robert Beezer uh, first course in linear algebra book. It's one of these like open source textbooks. So I think you can't go wrong with that. Mm -hmm. So let's see. Uh, one question is asking you: Would you do videos on how you solve problems, like your thought process on it, and uh, would be interesting? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I will. Um, I try. When I do contest problems, I try to include that in the problem, um, and when I make problems for my class. And maybe that's not as clear because I, I do a lot of that kind of training in class with my students mm -hmm. so I can like hear them talk right back to me mm -hmm. um, and get their immediate feedback. Uh, but yeah, I know that, you know, maybe most applicable to this is like I'm coaching the problem solving team for uh, uh, my new college like this fall and I'm going to make some videos for that. So, and those are going to be just like kind of heuristic problem solving videos. So maybe that will be helpful. Mm. And do you have a favorite formula? Um, yeah. Uh, so I don't know, maybe one that everyone knows, uh, for Maslow's theorem is obviously very beautiful. Yes. Um, uh, maybe something that is more dear to my heart, uh, th that maybe the Jacobi identity for a Lie algebra, because that's kind of related to what I do. Mm. Um, that should be fine. <laughs> I see. And um, somebody asks, 
What's the most difficult integral you had to solve? Uh, I, I think maybe the most difficult integrals I've done, I've made videos of. Is that the one? <laughs> because, because, you know, like, uh, the, the math that I do, like, for research or whatever doesn't involve doing integrals. <laughs> so, um... Uh, I only do hard integrals for videos because people like videos of hard integrals yeah. and I find them interesting myself. Mm -hmm. um, and so anytime I find a hard integral, uh, I make a video of it. So, I see. Yeah, your, your yeah. video on the integral of ln of cosine x from 0 to pi over 2, that one's impressive. Yeah, that like one's the, crazy. the cube one. Yeah, to a third power. Yeah, that's... the one where I did... <laughs> All right, so let's see. Did you see any questions that you would like to answer as well on the chat? Um, how can I really understand trigonometric substitution for integrals? I think maybe like the important thing here is it's not trigonometric substitution, it's just some substitution. And what you're like leveraging here is that trig functions have these nice identities. Mm -hmm. Right. And so what you're trying to, f whenever you do trigonometric substitution for an integral, like substituting the trig function in isn't the important part. The important part is that you're substituting these functions in that have these nice identities. So, you know, like, like tangent squared plus one is secant squared and stuff like that. So if you like recognize that it's not about the trig functions, it's about the identities that the trig functions satisfy, then you can start thinking about that in kind of a broader sense. I don't know if that's a good answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's see. Oh, what's the most difficult subject of math? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I got to go with algebraic geometry, like modern algebraic geometry, where they're talking about categories and all of these really, really fancy things like sheafs and stacks and stuff. I think that is like so unintelligible. I really mm. wish that I could understand it, but I've like broken my brain a few times Ooh. just like trying to read textbooks on that kind of wow. stuff. Um, yeah. Especially like kind of the most uh, uh, popular or no, famous like graduate textbook, Hartshorn, is like super hard to read. Mm. Um, and it's kind of just bragging rights if you've read the book and done the exercises. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mu prime method, math is like uh, putting a word from, from this kind of modern algebraic geometry stuff. Interuniversal theory? Something theory, that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. yeah. I, I, don't even, I don't even know. Hmm. Oh, so online education versus in person. Well, I mean, my my thoughts have changed fairly recently. Uh, uh, my partner just did an online math, or sorry, an online uh, nursing program, and like, uh, she's a, she's going to become a nurse practitioner. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a very, very good program. And so uh, I think online programs can be very, very good. But I think some of them aren't very good. <laughs> and since my college has moved online, well, we had to do it at the last minute. So I think we're doing an okay job. But, uh, uh, you know, I think, you know, we can always improve. So um, I think in-person is best. But if you can only do online, then... yeah. You know, do, that. do you know anything about the summer or the fall? Are you guys still going to be online? Or this? Mm, I, I don't know. So our summer, we don't have summer classes except online okay. anyway. And in the fall, we haven't made a decision. Uh, we do have a little bit of an, an advantage because we're a very, very small college. We only have 600 oh, students. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we're in a fairly small town. Like, there have only been 40 cases of the virus in our town. Mm -hmm. um, and our students generally come from the, this geographic area. So it's kind of safer for us to open than a lot of other. Yeah. But 
I don't, you know, I'm not part of the team that's making those decisions, so I don't really know. Okay. Yeah. I think for my... Oh, do I like topology? Yeah. I like topology a lot. Um, in fact, uh, my first year of grad school, I thought that I was going to study topology. And uh, me and one of my classmates went to ask a, the professor a question about a homework problem. And he asked us, hey, what do you guys think you're going to do? And we both said topology. And then he said, um, but you don't draw any pictures on your homework problems. You only use symbols. You're going to study algebra. You're not going to study topology. And we didn't believe him, but, but it turned out to be true for both of us. <laughs> <laughs> I think one question is really interesting. Can you tell us more about your researching? Uh, yeah, I mean, I sort of, so, uh, maybe recently, uh, I've been working, uh, kind of in this field of quantum invariant theory, which is like, uh, maybe the, the easiest thing, the easiest way to describe it is via these things called, uh, symmetric polynomials, mm -hmm. which is really, really easy to describe with two variables. So imagine you're looking for a polynomial with two variables. So let's say those variables are X or X and Y. Mm -hmm. And the polynomial remains unchanged if you replace X and Y. Okay, yes. So like if you take X plus Y and you exchange X and Y, you get Y plus X, which is the same, yes. right? And then if you take uh, X times Y and you replace X and Y, you get X times Y, so you're still okay, yes. right? Well, it turns out that the whole space of these polynomials can be generated algebraically by X plus Y and X times Y. And so those are the uh, elementary symmetric polynomials and two variables, those two. Um, yeah. And so recently, I, and oh, well, maybe before we get, Further, you can do this in n variables as well. Mm -hmm. So you've got a polynomial in, in, in n variables, and you switch any of the variables any way that you want. Wow. Uh -huh. And it remains unchanged. And so those are called the symmetric polynomials in n variables. So recently I've been um, looking at that kind of structure, but in this world of vertex algebras. Um, for what it's worth, which has been like really good because <clears throat> uh, even though it's kind of hard to describe in this setting, uh, if you have, if I can like sit down with someone like twice a week for a month, I can give them a problem to try. And so I've had a lot of success doing having uh, like uh, student researchers and getting good results from that. So it's been cool. Mm, nice. All right, so I have prepared a couple more questions, and this one is more about like, um, like, like not really like math, but like let's see. Um, can you share your memorable a memorable teaching experience while in college? I mean, when you teach college, like, what's your experience like? Uh, your favorite experience so far? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <clears throat> like, share stories. Yeah. Um, when I. Again, like when I was in Colorado, they use something called the block plan at Colorado College, which is like students only take classes for three and a half weeks and faculty only teach classes for three and a half weeks. And mm -hmm. those classes meet from nine to noon every morning. Mm -hmm. And some of them meet in the afternoons too. So it's a lot of time with students, mm. right? And so I taught this geometry class, um, out of this like book called classical symmetry, mm -hmm. which is a really, really beautiful book. It does like uh, Euclidean geometry, but it proves everything using like transformations and stuff. It's really, really cool. And there were six students in the class and you know, we did a mixture of me presenting stuff and them presenting stuff. And then, everyone working through like problems together and so just the whole days were spent like just doing problems together and um exploring this new subject and the whole class came together as a really awesome team wow um yeah. 
And it was, I don't know, it was like really, really great. Um, and it was a little bit because of the subject, which was really fun. And it was a little bit because of the people in the class. And it was a little bit because of the structure of the course being on the block plan and seeing each other every day. I mean, we were seeing each other like five hours a day, right? Yeah, that's great. For three and a half weeks. So that's a lot of time to like, you know, hang out with four or five or six people and do math. Definitely. Um, and everyone got along and it, you know, it was, it was great. Was he doing the summer or just... Like, no, uh, no. So they, Colorado College does this all, all year round. Well, not during the summer. They do this for their semesters. Oh, okay. So just a semester, they just pick us three and a half weeks and then you guys do that schedule. Yeah, so the, semest yeah, so the, me the semester has uh, four of these chunks. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so students take four classes, but just one at a time. Oh, okay. Well, interesting. Yeah, my college, uh, my, my recent college, which is actually a little bit due to my do doing, we're moving to something similar. We're doing two classes at a time in two chunks. Wow. And so it'll be seven weeks and um, two classes at a time. And a lot of people are really dubious about it at first, but there's a lot of really good data mm -hmm. on uh, it increasing uh, learning outcomes and stuff like that. Yeah, that sounds really good. That sounds really and, interesting. Yeah, it's really great. And not only learning outcomes, but stuff that administrators like to like uh, um, re retaining students and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like for me, I have a winter yeah. class or summer class. The schedule is five weeks. And um, each every day from Monday to Thursday, we meet from like 5 p.m. to 9.30. So four and a half hours. <laughs> That's our yeah, winter yeah, intersections. Yeah. So, but doing those um, classes, I have I think the best results with the students and the best connection with the students because just like you said, I see the students every day for that many hours a day. Oh, for sure, for sure. I think, I think doing classes like that is the way to do it. And I think like big long semester long classes that it's like, no one has the energy for that. They last hmm. too long. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone burns out at some point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's much easier to see, hey, do you guys remember the things that we talked about like three weeks ago, four weeks ago? Instead of saying, hey, do you guys remember the things we talked about from like three months ago, four months ago? <laughs> exactly, exactly. And then you've had a test in another, in another class yesterday that you studied for. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. All right, um... All right, so I, I know a lot of um, my viewers right, right now, they are college students. So can you give us some words of encouragement for the students who are struggling or who are trying to improve in their math skills, etc., etc.? Right, well, I would say, you know, work hard and don't give up. I read this book called Grit. Mm -hmm. And it changed my whole uh, life view. I used to think that um, there was something called innate talent, but now I don't really believe in that. I think you just have to work hard and consistently at your goals. Yes, definitely. Uh, and you will succeed. Um, and I think maybe uh, you know using resources like YouTube mm -hmm. to. Uh, understand things that maybe you don't understand, which you probably are if you're in the chat right now. <laughs> um, it's always something good. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, yeah, so I, maybe, th maybe that's all I, I would say is seek out um, different avenues of learning the material, be it videos or different textbooks. I mean, there are a ton of textbooks that are free online now if you don't like the one that's assigned for your class. Yes, yeah. Um, you could look at the American Institute of Mathematics, mm -hmm. AIM. Mm -hmm. They keep a, a list of open source textbooks that are that have been vetted by you know professors and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and then try as many problems as you can, and you know just keep keep working at it. Don't give up. I see. Yeah, and yeah, work and. Uh, Re reach out to the students in your classes, you know, um, getting another set of eyes on a set of problems isn't a bad thing ever. And you can always learn from something, something from someone, 
even if you're not expecting it. Right, definitely. If the students are struggling, just try to ask for help and then try to work with others. And it's more fun that way too. Not just like do math oh, absolutely. by himself or by somebody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly, yeah. And lastly, can I ask you about your future plans, especially maybe on channel? What are the things that we can expect to see from your channel? Yeah, so <clears throat> I'm going to keep this like kind of strategy that I've been using, which is uh, flipping my classes mm -hmm. on my channel. Um, and so anyone interested in those, obviously, like, look out for that. I'm uh, teaching real analysis in the fall. Wow. That's and so I should have a bunch of videos about real analysis. Mm -hmm. And then um, in the spring, I'm uh, intro to proofs. So like an introductory proof writing class. And so we'll, there'll be a bunch of videos about that. That'll be great. And then um, uh, I'm going to try to put out, well, right now it's every day, but I, I can't keep up with that. Um, just a kind of a fun video every day, that, whether it be like a competition problem or like an interesting integral or something like mm -hmm. that. Um, and I don't want to like tie myself down to doing one type of problem or another. I'm just going to kind of find different interesting problems and that'll probably change over time. And hopefully I find ones that people are interested in watching. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's kind of the, the strategy, you know, my course videos and then my fun videos. Nice stuff. Um, I want to, Oh, I'm getting a new chalkboard and I kind of want to upgrade my sound a little bit. Anyway, there are all these technical kind of things that I want to do as well. Um, but that's kind of neither here nor there. Uh -huh. Well, that would be great, especially if, if you teach like an intro to proof um, class, if you have a lot of those videos, I'm pretty sure a lot of students will be finding them really helpful, especially uh, real analysis, because I remember when I was an undergrad student, man, real analysis was like a whole new different level. <laughs> oh, for sure, for sure. I mean, real analysis is like so many times it is the most difficult class that someone takes um, while they're in college. Yes, definitely, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for sharing your experience and we have about like a couple more minutes. So I think for the rest of the time, we're just again open to you guys. So if you guys have any questions, please leave it right now and then we can just take a look and we'll just pick up some questions to answer. Um, someone says, can you, um, suggest a course in algebra? Maybe, uh, maybe that means a textbook in algebra. Like, uh, like I said, there's this really great one by Thomas Judson. It's open source. Uh, you can find it at like abstract.ubs.edu. It's like on the University of Puget Sound website. So it's like called abstract algebra something 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 <laughs> mm -hmm. uh and uh thomas judson that's a really good one and then if you feel like you grow out of that one um then i would say dumb it and foot is maybe this like fantastic first year graduate textbook in algebra that is like encyclopedic that i really want my kind of personal goal is to have videos like covering all the material from Dummit and Foot. Mm. Um, but that has a smaller audience than maybe uh, some of the other videos that I do. So, you know, we'll see. I actually, I used that book before um, when I was in school. I think, yeah, it's a great yeah. book. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't mind, I, have, I think I saw a really good question. Do you... Um, let me see where is that question. I just lost it. Let me let me try to find out again. Oh yeah, so this question I think is really great. What do you do if you have a mathematical idea that you want to share, but you are not sure if it already exists? Oh yeah, so um, <clears throat> I mean I know what I do. <laughs> I ask a. Uh, uh, my old PhD advisor who knows everything. Oh, okay. <laughs> but that's not something you, but that's not something you would do. Um, I mean, you just have to do a really, really careful literature search, right? Mm. 
um, which is really, re it's really difficult to do sometimes. Um, <clears throat> probably, uh, if you can't find anything in the literature, I don't know, like you could post on math stack exchange or something and see if anyone has heard of it. Um, I mean, that's a, that's a tricky problem, right? Cause sometimes it's not always easy to find all of that kind of stuff. Mm, yeah, I see. Yeah. And do you see any other questions that you find interesting you're going to talk about? Oh, someone, uh, oh, but that someone mentions this book, Putnam and Beyond. Yeah, that's a really good problem solving book. Mm -hmm. um, which applications does abstract algebra have? Like, um, I mean, this is kind of an algebraic number theory type of application, um, but cryptography uh, is an application of like a, of algebraic number theory, which you have to know abstract algebra in order to tackle. Um, like the RSA algorithm, you can understand just with elementary number theory, but more, more like modern uh, cryptographic methods like elliptic curves and stuff come from algebraic number theory, which you need to know kind of all of abstract algebra to understand. Um, I mean, uh, you know, there's abstract algebra applications into physics mm -hmm. too, but you know, that's like past a first course in abstract algebra as well. That's like into, uh, like Lie groups and Lie algebras. Um, so, you know, I would say like a first course in abstract algebra may not seem like it has a ton of applications and that's maybe right. And the applications are kind of like not super interesting but you know as with most things that's really a path towards these things that have more important applications i see mm -hmm. um not thoughts on not theory i don't really know much about not theory uh um, i think it's cool it's nice that you can draw pictures and stuff and it's really like understandable or maybe not it's it's really easy to to explain the basics to someone and that's always a positive mm -hmm. is differential geometry hard um i think probably all math is hard <laughs> um the one thing i i would say is that if you've taken multivariable calculus the very very end of calculus three is like the the curtain between that and differential geometry is very thin Like you're very, very close to some pretty cool things about differential geometry um, at the end of a multivariable calculus class, which is uh, unfortunate that not everyone sees until too late. Mm. Um, what's the main difference in high school and college math? Uh, I just said the question, but I don't know that I can answer it very well because I don't know much about high school math anymore. Um, I would probably just say the rigor with which it is uh, um, described. Um, like people who teach college math are like super annoying about being very careful with every, every step, right? Yeah. Um, which is often not done in the <laughs> high school setting. And I'm not saying that that's right or wrong, mm -hmm. but I think it's maybe just true. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think like, I think a lot of times probably a high school teacher does a better job at teaching uh, pre-calculus than I do um, because I like get stuck on these things that maybe are not super important for the students to understand the class, but you know, maybe I'm trying to get better or something like that. <laughs> Should I take linear algebra or calculus two first? Uh, um, I don't know. The same time? I think depends on the college. I think that's. I think that's possible. I don't think linear, linear algebra usually does not have calculus two as a prerequisite. Hmm. I mean, if you want me to be honest, and this isn't like shared by everyone, but you know, I know in the United States, there's this big push to have high school students take AP calculus. And that's like the most important thing. Like, ah, the ultimate of high school mathematics is calculus. Yeah. I think like high school students should maybe take some linear algebra 
also. Yeah. And maybe discrete math too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't, I mean, calculus is sure. It's like really beautiful and it's got all these applications that are right out of a box. Like you can, you know, maximize the size of the field that you're building for your pigs with the amount of fence that you have or <laughs> yes, whatever the cheesy just, yes. <laughs> uh, uh, applications they give you. But, um, I mean, but then in order to do calculus really, really carefully, you have to do real analysis, which isn't until you're a, a senior in college. Mm -hmm. And so it seems a little silly to put, you know, calculus, you know, at, at such a low level. But, you know, I think it's fine. Just it'd be nice if it were maybe calculus mixed with some other stuff like linear algebra, discrete math. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Quantum Chio says... Oh, AP Statistics versus AP okay. Calculus? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I never took a course in statistics, so I don't know it. <laughs> I find it interesting. A lot of the math professors... Uh, I only took one, by, uh, to be honest, right? But like a lot of math professors yeah. we don't take stats. <laughs> yeah, I don't... I can't say if that's good or bad, <laughs> or neither. <laughs> I know what the mean is. <laughs> Yeah, we have to compute that for the students' exams. The, well, yeah, the median, yeah, yeah, also the a, median. I have the spreadsheet. Yeah, I have the spreadsheet. For that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and also the standard deviation. Those are the things that I know really well because I have to do that for the students' exams. Oh right, right, right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Would you like to pick maybe like a last one or last two questions for this? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, that sounds yeah. good. Um, who created algebra? I think it was uh, created in the Middle East. I think so. Yeah, um, I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Al algebra. Jabber. Yeah. I don't. You know, I'm not very good at pronouncing things, but um, yeah, a lot of um, a lot of care. A lot of the early kind of careful algebra and uh, geometry and stuff like that came out of the Middle East. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and the word algorithm came from Arabic as well. Mm. Uh, um, can a number be non-complex, which we don't know yet? Mm. I think what, what we're saying is like, um, is there, you know, we have to add I to the real numbers to make the complex numbers into, in, into sort of like complete something. Is there something that you would add onto that? Well, it depends on what your goal is. So if you're like, the, the reason I is added to comp, well, this isn't the only reason, but a reason that I is added to complex numbers, or sorry, to real numbers to make complex numbers, is so that you can linearly factor all polynomials. Oh, yes. But like, once you've linearly factored all polynomials, you're all set and you don't need to add anything. I mean, you know, there is this like thing that above that called the quaternions, uh, which is uh, the real numbers with three new things added, I, J, and K, but it's no longer commutative. Mm. So it's not, it's not a field. Um, so, I mean, I guess, yeah, you can add stuff to it, but it's maybe not interested. It's not interesting from, the standpoint of creating an algebraically closed field, which is the goal for making the complex numbers. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For what it's worth. <laughs> um, well, what application does topology have? Maybe this could be the last one. Okay. I don't know. Okay. I mean, Let's I go could for go yeah. forever, but um, <laughs> yeah, maybe this one. Uh, yeah, I, I maybe mentioned this one because there's a very new application that's super important called topological data analysis, and it's one of these uh, topics in big data. I don't know much about it. I just know that like a bunch of colleges are uh, hiring for this kind of stuff right oh, now. Oh, interesting. <laughs> so, if, so if you want to study it, and it's right on the edge of pure and applied math, um, now is the time to study it. So the idea is you take big data sets – um, and you think of them in some uh, very high dimensional space, and then you look at the topological structure. In other words, like 
the geometry of these data sets within that higher dimensional space and you do something like I said, I don't know much about it, but it does like, uh, provide, um, uh, like this new application to topology that's only a few years old. Mm. And, uh, that would be a very, very good subject to go into right now. Like if anyone is thinking about going to grad school in the very, very near future, I would say like, and you like topology, that'd be something good to study. Ah, I see. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for Vesa Pen. All right. So this is, yeah, thanks for having Pretty much me. it for today. It was great to have uh, Professor Penn to be on our channel, uh, you know, during this afternoon uh, with us and having you to share with share with share your experience with us. Thank you so much, and uh, maybe we can do this again in the future. Maybe we'll see. Yeah, yeah, this was great. Yeah, if you guys have any more questions, leave it down below and go check out Professor Penn's channel. I will have the links in the description, and you guys can also. Um, Go check out his videos and ask us any questions. Sounds good. And again, thanks for having me. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. And yeah, thank you. And again, for everyone who's here today, thank you guys so much for coming and thank you guys for your questions. And I will see you guys soon. Bye.